Welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church Online. We're glad you're here. Are you a first time visitor? Do you want to know more about salvation or church membership? Use your phone to scan the corresponding code on your screen for more information. Join our church family in reading through the Bible. Scan the code on your screen to see our one year Bible reading plan. We have several online events each week to keep you focused on the Word of God. Monday Manna includes teaching and preaching from different pastors and ministers. We have Bible studies on Tuesdays at 12 noon and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We also have an in-person Bible study on Thursdays from 6 to 7 in the Ebenezer Church Sanctuary. Thank you for your giving. You can donate to Ebenezer through the Tithely app by texting GIVE to the number on the screen or mailing donations to our secure mailbox. You can also give during our in-person services on Sundays at 8.45 and 10.45 a.m. This week at Ebenezer Baptist Church. This Sunday is Popsicle Sunday at Ebenezer. The youth ministry will give out popsicles after both the 845 and 1045 in-person services. Pastor Woods will be the Wednesday night speaker for New Goshen's Fall Revival. Service begins at 7 p.m. Our annual Back to School Prayer and School Supply giveaway will be this Thursday, August 15th at 7 p.m., directly following our Thursday Bible study. The missionaries will meet Saturday, August 17th at 10 a.m. The women's ministry will also meet Saturday, August 17th at 11 a.m. And now, enjoy the service. Good morning. Today I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through verse 5. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention, no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Thank you.
Down through the years, the Lord has been so, so good to all of us. If you are a witness to that song, can you just give God a head clap of praise? Can you just lift up those hands, um, show out in those remarks, uh, put some emotion time, some hands there, some praise, some hallelujahs. Just thanking the Lord for all that he has done for us. I'm just excited about God's grace upon our lives. And I'm telling you, as we get into this message today, you're going to be blessed as we have been actually making our way through the Old Testament and looking at uh, particular figures that had a great impact. They were also in that genealogical line of Jesus the Christ. Before we go any further, I want us to go in a word of prayer uh, and just invite God's presence into this place. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for watching over us, uh, being more than enough in every situation. Now, Father, I pray if there's someone listening or viewing uh, that doesn't know you, that today be their day, that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith, not of themselves. It is a gift of God. Oh, that they wrap their hands around that wonderful gift. Now, Lord, we welcome your presence. Holy Spirit, we sense you already. Would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we've been in this section of uh, Back to the Basics, we really have been going through uh, subtopics uh, that uh, our young people gave me and said, Pastor, could you teach on some of these things? And it has been a delight. But before we get into our uh, text of the day, I want us to go back to our memory scripture. And we've been saying this each Sunday over and over again, and I hope it's getting into your mind. I'm actually memorizing the book of James. And every time I get to this particular scripture, uh, it really it begins to blossom even more. But I don't want us just to memorize it and get it into our heart. I want us to apply it to our lives. So if you don't mind, if you could go to James 126 and 127 with me and read it aloud with me. If anyone amongst you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. James 127, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Isn't that good? That is a challenge in our society, but that's why we have uh, the blessed Holy Spirit. Uh, last Sunday, uh, we actually talked about Jacob slash Israel. Remember wrestling with God and that whole saga of how God showed up in a theophany and had an encounter with Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. Um, this Sunday, we progress many years, and we're going to pick up one of his children. Yes, one of his children. Um, the background, the person that we're going to focus on today is Joseph. 
So a little bit of background to get to this particular scripture today. Um, Jacob slash Israel, uh, his favorite wife literally was Rachel. And from Rachel, he has two children. One of them is Joseph and the other is Benjamin um, before she passes away. And so today we're going to pick up this life story of Joseph. And we'll talk a little bit more about his history. Let's go to Genesis 39 and 19. Genesis 39 and 19. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. It's a tough scripture, Genesis 39, 19. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. I want to speak from a subject matter today, when life is not fair. Yes, when life is not fair. Saints, it's tough in this life that we live. Um, there's so many inequalities, even as we are uh, looking at our political races and the struggles that are there. You know, each side is trying to stand for or fight against an inequality. Uh, even in our Olympics, I've been uh, catching pieces and parts. Um, there was a particular lady, uh, her name was Angela Karina. Um, she actually quit her boxing match after 46 seconds. Uh, and the reason was uh, she felt that the person that she was uh, fighting against was not a woman, but was a man. Um, this frustrated her so much that at the end of the 46 seconds, she falls down on the mat in tears and refuses to shake the hand uh, of this other person. Um, she had uh, actually looked into the history of this person and there had been some times that this person had failed in their testosterone test that literally uh, says if you're a male or a woman, there was too much testosterone, but she was able to pass it when she came into the Olympics. And so in this particular situation, uh, Karina, she'd actually lost. She lost the match uh, because of feeling that life was unfair. Uh, what happens in our life when when everything is going well, but then the bottom falls out? Any amen? Anybody ever been there? Today, uh, we pick up the life of Joseph and the challenges of just living from day to day. Um, the time frame is about approximately 1850 uh, BC. Um, Joseph names uh, actually means God will add or God will increase. God will add or God will increase. Remember, uh, this is one of two children from Rachel. Uh, Jacob slash Israel is his dad. Um, from the beginning, um, Joseph uh, began to have dreams as he went into his early teens. And these dreams uh, were saying literally that his dad, mom would bow down to him. Uh, that uh, his brothers would bow down to him. This caused problems. Another uh, issue or struggle within the family was that Joseph gets a coat of many colors uh, from his dad, uh, Jacob slash Israel, because Joseph was the favorite son. Now, this was really complicated because Joseph was not the oldest son. And generally, it would be the oldest son that would get these uh, elaborate blessings. So everyone in the family would be, no, this is the one that's going to be carrying on um, the lineage. This is the one that's going to be carrying on uh, who the family is. So Joseph at this point is already behind because his brothers don't like him, even though his dad uh, is just in love with him. So we find out uh, on a fateful day, and I'm concise in this story, Joseph goes out and um, he is supposed to run an errand for his dad. Uh, he is the tattletale of the family. Within the midst of this uh, confrontation with his brothers, his brothers want to kill him. Literally, they want to kill him. Uh, but they decide to put him in a pit. And from there, uh, they sell Joseph. Yes. Uh, they come up with this elaborate story that uh, Joseph was killed. They get that coat, rip it up, put blood on it, take it back to Jacob slash Israel. Uh, he believes that his son is dead, but he's been sold into slavery and he's making his way, yes, to Potiphar's house. So today uh, we want to uh, pick up Genesis 39 uh, and 1 and kind of walk through this. 
Um, theologians um, believe that uh, Joseph is approximately probably 20 years old when we pick up this particular scripture. I um, believe that he was actually sold into slavery at 17 years of age, 17 years of age. So it's been a long journey already. And so Genesis 39 and 1, it reads, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. And so remember, sold into slavery. Potiphar made a deal. You know, that's the way it was. Looking at uh, this young man, he needs somebody to work into his house. Genesis 39 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Here, here's the first point God is in control. God is in control. Think about it. When life is not fair, I want to encourage you to know, never forget that God is in control. Uh, even though uh, Joseph has been forced, literally forced into slavery, we find out that God hasn't left him. He's been uh, forsaken by his family, by his brothers, but God is still there. Um, Joseph's life is a testimony of what David wrote in Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging for bread. I, I'm, I'm so glad about this, that God is with us. But notice David goes on the Psalm 37 and 26. He is ever merciful and lends and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever when life is not fair. Even at our worst times, even in our struggles, when that bottom falls out in our lives, I want you to be encouraged to know that God is with you and the best is yet to come. Can you put in the chat, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Wherever you're standing or sitting, can you say the best is yet to come? Notice here in Genesis 39 and 3, it says, and his master saw uh, that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So I, I don't want us to forget the context of the scripture. He's in slavery. He was bought as a slave, he has been put into Potiphar's household, but uh, the master notices something about Joseph. This is a special man. He's, he's, he's different. Uh, the hand of God is upon him. Now, the Egyptian society, they actually worship many gods, uh, but he recognized that there's something, something uh, wonderful that's going on in Joseph's life and that whatever Joseph puts his hands to, uh, you remember that, uh, this story, the Midas touch, whatever he touched turned to gold. Uh, this is Joseph at this point in slavery. God is causing things to prosper. If I can give you a word today, I want you to know that even in the dark time, God can make light. Even in whatever you're going through, your struggle, know that God can bless it. I'm talking about when life is not fair. Uh, look at Genesis 39, 4. I love this. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. See that elevation? And all that he had, he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Look at this. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. This is important. Some of you are in some tough times right now, but I want you to know when God blesses you, every round, everyone around you that's connected gets blessed also. Notice a uh, Pharaoh's like, or, or, or Potiphar here, uh, he's thinking about, I'm thinking about getting to the palace, but Potiphar in his mindset here, he's like, okay, uh, this, this, this guy is being blessed of God. I am going to stay connected with him. The Lord was on all that he had in the house 
and in the field. Um, his, his, his plants were growing. Uh, everything was together. Um, Potiphar is excited about this. I'm talking about when life is not fair. I think that as we're going through our struggles, we need to learn how to praise God. There ought to be some amen, some hallelujahs. I dare you in the midst of your trouble to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's already done for you and all that he's doing in your struggle. I'm telling you, that will bring up a praise from the inside out. Look at Genesis 39, 6. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Um, um, Potiphar is so blessed by Joseph. Um, his ingenuity, uh, his giftedness, um, that he decides, I'm going to put everything that I have in the hands of this slave. Now, I am telling you, this, this, this is huge because he had other slaves that were in the house. We're going to find out later, but Joseph has risen to the top. And in essence, in just a short time, because God is blessing him so much, uh, literally a Potiphar, you're going to find out, and I'm going to use this, actually puts him second in charge. Now, now work with me because we're going somewhere. Uh, look at this. Thus, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Uh, here's the point I want you to get out. One word, favor. Favor. Could you put in the chat, favor, wherever you're standing, sitting, can you say favor? Uh, the, the Hebrew thought of this, I want to define it as we're going to get into this section when, when life is not fair. Favor is the experience of having God's approval and receiving blessings directly from him. I, I want to read that again. Favor is the experience of having God's approval and receiving blessings directly from him. I, I'm telling you, in this point in Joseph's life, favor is upon him. Now, oftentimes we think about favor when we're in good situations or circumstances, but don't forget the context. He is still a slave. <laughs> no, no matter uh, that he's working at a high level, he's second in charge. He's still a slave who has a master. Uh, Joseph, even in this situation, is still being blessed. Can you put in the chat, bless, bless, bless. Uh, remember in Genesis 39, 5, the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. So often we need to look around and just see how blessed we are. Uh, Pastor T.D. Jakes, he, he came up with this term. He said, favor ain't fair. Any witnesses out there? Here is Joseph still in slavery, still in the struggle of his life. I, I want to pull back to the history. Um, um, Joseph has to be having flashbacks. He's been sold out by his brothers. Uh, he's been separated from his dad, his family, uh, those who are intimate. He is all by himself, but it's so good to know that God is with him. Let me show you Genesis 39, 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Here's the point. Yield not to temptation. Yield not to temptation. Now we we know we know God is with Joseph. We 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 have we have defined that he has been blessed in everything that he does. Uh, in the former scripture, we found out that he's handsome. He has good looks, and and because of his hard work ethic, uh, everything is in place on him. Things are going well, but the enemy begins to mess. Yield not to temptation. I I, I just want you to get the picture today. I, I, I'm going to try to keep it PG today. Uh, but the, 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 the wife of Potiphar, as she's in the house, uh, she begins to have longing eyes uh, at uh, Joseph. Uh, I, I can see her from day in and day out uh, putting on her Egyptian perfume and uh, her best attire and, and walking uh, in front of uh, uh, Joseph and trying to get his attention. Uh, so much so that she just comes forward and she says, lie with me. I want you uh, to be with me. I'm telling you, uh, for a slave to be in this position, I know there had to be a lot of temptation, but I, I, I wish you could just scream out with me, uh, Joseph, please stay true to God. In, in a day and time that so many men, and I would say men of God, are falling left and right, right to, to adultery and, and fornication and all kinds 
kinds of lewdness uh, when it comes to our society. It's so good to see here within the scripture that God can use whomever he wants to use and he can cause us to stand and not yield to temptation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 gives us this idea of even where Joseph is. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man, but God is faithful. Can you put faithful in the chat wherever you're standing here and say faithful, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape. Escape. I'm going to work you today in the chat. Can you put escape, escape wherever you're standing, say escape and sitting escape that you may be able to bear it. And so this temptation is real to Joseph. He has to make a decision. Um, the Egyptian women of that time were known for their beauty. Uh, they were uh, known for their enticing spirit. So there is a high level of temptation before Joseph at this point. But remember, he has a relationship with God. Uh, remember, uh, the enemy comes in, John 10, 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. But he says, I have come that we may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Here we find out the enemy is trying to rip apart everything that Joseph is. He's already been in this life of slavery. His family is gone. He's been separated. Now he has a, a time of, of a possible pleasure, but the enemy is setting up a trickery. But I'm so glad for God. H.R. Palmer in 1868 really captures where he is. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight valiantly onward, evil passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Any witnesses out there when life is not fair? Look at this, Genesis 39 and 8. But he refused. Go, Joseph. Go, Joseph. Thank God. Thank God for a man of God that's willing to stand in spite of the pressures. Uh, yes, yes, she's coming at him day in and day out, trying to entice him, trying to get him to sin against his God. But Joseph refused and said uh, to uh, his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. Uh, so so Joseph, he, he recognizes the level that he's been exalted. He recognized the trust that's been bestowed to him. That verse 9, there is no one greater in this house than I. I, I, I told you, second in charge under uh, Potiphar here, nor has he kept back anything uh, from me but you. I tell you, this is heavy. He said, everything. I, I got the checkbook, and I, I, I'm buying and groceries. Huh? I'm over all the other slaves. Uh, there's, there's nothing that he's kept back uh, from me except for you, lady. And, and you need to step off. You need to get back because there's something else that's going on because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Here's the point. How much do you love the Lord? Yes. How much do you love the Lord? I'm finding out that some people are saying they can sing songs, I surrender all, and oh, how I love Jesus. But when it comes to temptation, when it comes to pleasures of this world that are contrary to God's will, so many are going after the enemy's ways. But I'm so glad. Look at this scripture, 39.9, that second part. He says, how then can I do this great witness, wickedness uh, and sin against God? And that's where we have to stand as people of God, as men of God, as mankind, those who are saved and love the Lord as women of God, we've got to decide how then can I do this great wickedness? How then can I go against God's will simply because God is who I love? How much do you love the Lord? A theologian, a B. Wilkinson, really captures a thought of what's going on. He says the key to Joseph's conduct was his godly character and the basis for that character was his recognition that he belonged to God and served him. Do, do you understand understand who you belong to. Man, I, I want you to get this. Even though I, I Joseph is in slavery, 
Even though Joseph has been bought by Potiphar, Joseph never forgets that really who really owns him is the Lord. I hope you got that. Uh, he, he is a slave to Potiphar. Uh, he, he has a master that's over him. But Joseph, understand, I have a greater master than, than Potiphar. I, I have a greater leader than the ones that are right here. I am God's. God owns me. Joseph is totally sold out to God. I'm telling you, when life Life is not fair. Even at this low junction of his life and these struggles, he still sold out to the Lord. Romans 12, 1 uh, says it like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, here it is that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. That's the baseline. Even when life is not fair, the baseline, I'm going to give everything to him. Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be trained transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even when life is not fair. Look at Genesis 39, 10. So it was. And she spoke to Joseph. Here it is, day by day. Can you say day by day, day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. She she wouldn't give up. This Egyptian woman would not give up. Kept coming at him every day. I can see her. I can see her trying to cut him off as the corner. He's trying to do his job. She's sashaying in front of him every day. But guess what? Joseph stays focused on his God. He loves the Lord with his whole heart. Look at Genesis 39, 11. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the the house was inside. Poor Joseph, uh, uh, he may have had a, a lapse of, uh, of thought or focus at this point, but he goes in the house and he just doesn't look around. Uh, all the men, the other slave, they are out. They're out. I think, I think uh, the scriptures don't uh, show this in detail, but I think uh, Potiphar's wife, this woman had already set up, she said, everybody clear out of the house. And it was a trap that was set up. But Joseph, he just kind of walks in and doesn't see what's going on. So when he comes in, no men were there uh, in the house house. You, you need to be careful what house you go into. Don't go in by yourself. Uh, there's a word for somebody, verse 12, that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. <laughs> this is probably one of my uh, favorite points today. Do you know how to run? Yes. Do you know how to run? When life is not fair, I'm telling you, you you're going to have to know how to run because the enemy is going to come with unfair tactics towards you. And sometimes in your retreat, it's actually your victory. I hope you got that. Sometimes in your retreat comes your victory. This woman was determined not to give up. She was going to do whatever she had to do to be with Joseph. Uh, she was a, a true Egyptian Jezebel here, but I'm so glad for the, the character of Joseph. I'm so glad, again, for him being sold out. Genesis 39, 12, that she called him by his garment saying, lie with me, but he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. I, I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad uh, for Joseph. Uh, notice, notice, she, she's so determined and she reaches out and grabs him, trying to force him, uh, but 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 he does a, 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 a shimmy of a type, kind of a football move, and he's able to get out of the house, but the problem is the coat, the garment that he had, she rips it off from him as he runs out of the house. 2 Timothy 2.22 talks about this. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yes, Joseph sees uh, this, this time. He's got to run from this temptation because he wants to be true to God. But what happens when you do uh, everything that's right, but yet Life is still not fair. His Joseph is doing everything, uh, even as we look at from a New Testament principle that a, a Christian should do, uh, uh, not yielding to temptation, being honorable, taking care of things, running when temptation tries to overtake you, but still life is not fair for him. Let me show you Genesis 39, 13. And so it was. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of her house and spoke to him. The, the, the same ones I believe that she had kicked out. Uh, she, 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 she gets them all together and spoke to them. He said, see, 
He has brought uh, this into us, a uh, Hebrew to mock us. See, see that, that, that's the way the enemy is, right? Uh, you, you're all lifted up and you're all celebrated, but at a moment, everything can change. Some of you know that. You've been in situations and, and you thought, man, this is the pleasure of my life. And then that thing flipped upside down and it became a horror story. Notice he says, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew, uh, picks up his back name. Uh, before, we, we, we didn't even talk about this. He was uh, the greatest of the greats second in charge, running everything. Now he's a dreaded Hebrew. That's what she's bringing up. She called him a, a, a name. That's that's what she does to, to demean him in his mindset. He came into me and to lie with me. And I cried out with a loud voice. All of this is made up. This is a story that's fabricated because she's been hurt because uh, this man has denied her. Uh, this actually uh, probably went against her personality. Her self-esteem hurt her because she was able to do whatever she wanted to do with everybody else, but not with God's man, not with Joseph, not with this one that had trusted the Lord, even in the midst of this darkness when life was not fair. Look at Genesis 39, 15, and it happened. She goes on with this story when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Here's the point. The lie. Yes. The lie. When life is not fair. I, I want you to be encouraged because some of you have been in some situations where people have literally lied on you. You tried to do the right thing. Joseph uh, 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 sold, sold into slavery. Joseph uh, uh, transported to Potiphar's house, has a master, and he's been elevated. But this woman won't leave him alone. He's done everything right, ran out, and, 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 and now he's done everything right. She lies on him. Jesus speaks to this in Matthew 5, 11. He says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Uh, the, the, the key and the blessing of this story is that it's false. Yeah, it, it, it's still tough. It, it, it's terrible. We're going to find out. There's going to be some struggles that come out of this, but it's false. I'm so glad for Joseph uh, standing the test, but yet there's still repercussions. And, and you got to know that even in your best days, as you're trusting the Lord, there's some time the enemy is still going to bring his best and continue to hit at you. And life is not going to be fair, but know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Look at Matthew 5, 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great. Somebody say great. Can you put it in chat. Great, great. Wherever you're standing, sin, say great, great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before me. Uh, God speaks strongly on the plight of those who lie. Yes, Potiphar's a wife, she is a liar and she has fabricated this story, but there is judgment. And, and sometimes we got to realize when we're in situation, judgment doesn't come quickly, but judgment will come. Revelations 21, 8 talks about this, but I tell you what will happen to Calvary and to everyone who is unfaithful or dirty-minded or murderers or sexually immoral or uses witchcraft or worships idols or tells lies, they will be thrown into the lake of fire and burning sulfur. This is the second death. Judgment is on its way. But what happens when life is not fair for the one who loves the Lord? Look at Genesis 39, 17. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, the Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock uh, me, the uh, Potiphar. Potiphar, he, he, comes, he comes home from a long day of work. And, and remember, he, he's excited to have Joseph a part of his family. And, and he's trusted him with everything except for his wife. And, and so, verse 18, it happened as I lifted my voice, she begins to uh, talk about this fabrication that she has produced to her husband. I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the word which his wife spoke to him saying, your servant did to me and after this manner that his anger was aroused. Now we're, we're going to deal with some, some struggles that's in the text here. I, I, I believe that, that Potiphar, he has a lot that's going on in his mind. As a man, as a man, uh, to think that his wife would make advances uh, towards Joseph, that was hard in itself. And so uh, the anger could uh, could be towards Joseph, but also towards his wife. Uh, the scriptures are not clear in letting us know, but there are a lot of dimensions that are
are going on here. But notice here, verse 20, then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. Here's the point. When your world shatters, when your world shatters. Now, the tension in the text is problematic because why don't we get to hear from Joseph? Why, why don't we hear him saying, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. The scriptures don't indicate because he was a slave. Maybe uh, he didn't have this liberty to talk when his master uh, had come in. And so now he just has to stand and take it at this point uh, because he is in the position that he's in. And now uh, the wife has, has told a lot. Uh, maybe at this point, because all the other men are standing around, the other slaves uh, of Potiphar, uh, he's thinking about uh, where he is in his position. This is a slap in his face that even if Joseph has done nothing, his wife has made advances towards a slave and, and now he has to deal with his manhood. There are a lot of things that are going on. Uh, historian Woodrow Crowe, he gives insight in the possibility of other uh, thoughts that Potiphar is going through. The fact that Joseph was not executed may indicate that Potiphar did not entirely believe his wife. He couldn't help knowing her true character. Uh, he, he had to know that he he had a, a Jezebel of a wife that, that was there in the house. Uh, God was working behind the scenes for Joseph, though uh, the latter resisted temptation and sought to avoid occasion for sin. Despite this, his would-be seducer framed him. Can, can you put in the chat, framed him, framed him, wherever you stand, it says, say, framed him. And so for a second time, here it is, Joseph found himself in chains. Under the circumstances, he should have been upset. But here it is. I believe this is working in Joseph also. But he was not under the circumstances. He wasn't under the circumstances. He was above them and saw God's hand in them. You have to in this situation. Uh, when, when life is not fair, Joseph had to have a grasp of the grace and mercy of God. And I want to speak to you. Some of you, I said earlier, are going through. You got to know that God is even in your mess. God is even in your darkness. God is even there when life life shatters, when the bottom falls out, when all kinds of things break loose, know that God will be with you and is with you. I look at these final verses as we pull this together today, uh, Genesis 39, 21, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor. I I'm telling you, but wherever you're standing, you said just say, but, 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 but the Lord. That, that's what changes when, when, when life is not fair, when, 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 when everything shatters in front of you, you got to know, you got to have that, but, but the Lord, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. That's so good to know whatever situation is. Do you know that the Lord is with you and showing you mercy and favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison? So when he moves from Potiphar's house to the prison, to chains, God has said, I'm still going to bless him. I'm still going to bless him. My hand is still going to be a and let me let me show you Genesis 39, 22. And the keeper of the prison, uh, the warden, uh, committed to Joseph's hand all, all, all the prisoners who were in the prison. Now, I'm telling you, go God, go God. So Joseph moves in. And because the favor and the blessings of God are upon him, all of a sudden, the, the keeper, the warden says, you know what? This guy is smart. I believe possibly he had a little resume uh, that was given to him from Potiphar uh, saying to the prison keeper, this is a good man. I, I, it doesn't indicate here, but God is moving on both sides so much so that the warden says, you know what? I'm going to put you in charge. Whatever they did there, it was in uh, his doing. Look at Genesis 39, 23. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. Here it is. Because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Here's the final point. Prospering in prison. Yes, prospering in prison. Uh, when life is not fair. I, I, I just want to encourage you and let you know you can prosper when it's unfair. You can prosper when it's dark. You can prosper when the enemy is doing all that he can do to tear you apart. I'm telling you, you can blossom in a barren land in the desert. There can be water, streams of water as long as you got God on your side. Uh, w. McDonald, he writes this. He said his time in prison was a training time for raining time. Isn't that good? A training time for raining time. So 
things that were meant by others for evil turn out to be for good. There ought to be some amens in the house. When life is not fair, God can turn the unfairness to fairness and he can prosper you even in the midst of the trouble. Well, Joseph will uh, make it uh, to prison, to, to the palace. I, I'm so glad I, I wish I had time to pull this, but yes, yes, he's going to be able to interpret some dreams and God's hand is going to be upon that. And before he knows it, he is going to be placed into the palace, going from the prison to the palace. And guess what? He's going to be second in command again under Pharaoh. I already said his name a little earlier. Pharaoh is going to be in charge, but Joseph is going to be second in charge of all Egypt. I'm telling you, this is good news. Uh, please understand, a theologian believe that he's about 30 years of age as he steps into the palace and takes control. When life is not fair, you must hold on and wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and know that he's going to strengthen your heart. Well, well even though uh, Joseph was a great man, he still had a fights with his, with his, with his flesh and, and his struggles within his life. Please, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I uh, see as he's second in command and he's navigating through the famine that will hit Egypt. Uh, his, his brothers are going to show up asking for food and, and, and Joseph's flesh is going to rise up. He's going to have to go through some games and, and some struggles in that, but God's going to keep him in line. Uh, please, please, please understand. He's going to come to the point after he struggles with his flesh and say this in Genesis 50 and 20, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive when life is not fair. I'm telling you, sometimes you're going to have to go through for a long time, but know that victory is on the way. See, Joseph was able to feed his family, get them through that famine. Do you know, though, that his family is going to die? His dad is going to die? Uh, generations are going to continue on. Uh, Joseph was able to save the Egyptian nation. Uh, from a certain uh, 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 a downfall, but I'm, I'm so glad uh, to let you know uh, that, that, that God did more than what Joseph could do. You, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? See, the Egyptian nation, even though they get through this famine, and they come out on top, uh, they're going to go through, and, and because of their sin, they're going to be judged. But I'm so glad that there is someone that can do more than Joseph did. There ought to be some amens in the house. See, see, it was not fair for Jesus of the New Testament to have to come from the royalty of heaven down to the squalor of this world. But I'm so glad that he did any amens out. It, it wasn't fair for him to have to deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees that didn't believe that he was God sent from heaven to earth. It, it wasn't fair that he even went into his ministry at the age of 30. Yes, remember. Remember that number, but only his ministry went for three years and he would have to be crucified at the age of 33 on a cross. But I'm, I'm so glad that he did. Any glad folks in the house? I'm so glad on that cross of Calvary, he carried our sins and bore our griefs and took our pains for us and became the propitiation for us. You know what? Life was not fair for him, but I'm so glad for his grace and mercy, his favor on the cross. Can you scream our favor that he cries out? It's finished. He gives up the ghost on our behalf. They put him in a cold grave, but three days later, he gets up with all power and all glory for us. That even in our struggles of life, when we find that life is not fair, we can know there is a greater one. His name is Jesus. He's the Christ. That even in the midst of unfairness in his life, he did it for us. And now that he's risen, hear me, he's on the right hand of the Father, and he's praying for us. Saints, no matter where we are, no matter what the struggle, no matter if we disagree with where we are and how things are turned out, know that Jesus is praying for you. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Joseph is an example of God's wonderful hand in the midst of a terrible situation. Saints of God, just living in this life is rough. It's tough. The amens we go through. But I'm so glad to let you know Jesus paid it all for us. Yes, he went through an unfair life for us that we could have victory in him. What a mighty God we serve. If you don't know Christ today, 
Would you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus? Would you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? He said, you will be saved. Yes, you can have the hand of God upon your life. And to be honest, even when you look back, hasn't God been gracious to you? Even those that don't believe, hasn't he blessed you in spite of yourself? He said he, he allows the rain to rain upon the just and the unjust. I'm telling you, that's a good God. Would you proclaim him as your Lord, as your master, as your savior? It's by grace through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God when life is not fair. To the saints, we've got to pray more. We've got to praise more. We've got to seek the Lord more and thank him for his blessings upon our lives. In the good times, as well as the bad, he is with us. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for this word. Thank you for the journey of Joseph's life, Lord. The example that he gave us of his character, even when life wasn't fair. But I thank you more for the Christ Jesus that went through an unfair life as we look at it. But we're so glad he was our propitiation. He is our everything. He is our sacrifice and got up on the third day for us. Thank you, God. Thank you for the blessing of soon being able to be with you, Lord, as this life passes away, that we know as saints, as believers, Lord, that we have an eternity with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit that dwells with us, Lord. Father, we pray, continue to order our steps as we go through this life. Lord, thank you that even when life is just not fair, that you are with us. Oh, that makes it all right. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, oh, some folk may doubt. Yes, and some folk may scorn. All can desert and leave me alone. Oh, but for me. And this is what distinguishes us. I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took my sins, my sins away. Oh, yes, since that day. Like you know it's true. Oh, yes, God is real. Oh, he's real in my soul. Oh, yes, God is real. He has washed and made me whole. Yes, in like you go. Let's do that one more time.